Hey kids, welcome back to Mr. Murray's Math Land. Uh, time for another uh, exciting chapter in the story of derivatives here. Pretty easy rule here today. We're taking the derivative of e to the x. An important distinction to make here is that you cannot use the power rule on this. The power rule is used for x raised to some constant. This is a constant raised to a variable. So you cannot use the power rule on this. And so this has got its own set of rules. And this is the first exponential uh, rule you'll learn. So here it is. Ready? The derivative of e to the x with respect to x is e to the x. And that's pretty cool. It's the only function whose derivative is itself. And that's it. And eventually next year you'll learn about uh, the derivatives of other exponential bases, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, etc., or any other constant raised to a variable, as well as their inverse functions, logarithms. But what's funny is that all of the rules you'll learn, they all have to do with base e. So they all have to do with natural logs and base e. So uh, everything in calculus, those two, come, come back to base e, the natural base, you know, natural growth, continuous compounding. So, yeah, very cool. But easy rule to use uh, if, you, if you know it. And so here we go. Let's just do a couple in action. It should be a, a pretty, pretty painless uh, experience, hopefully. So number one, find dy dx for this function. So the uh, y equals 6 e to the x plus 6 x to the e minus e to the sixth. So our derivative, y prime or dy dx. Remember what we're really doing here, if you're still you know, trying to get the hang of that Leibniz notation, is we're really taking the derivative of this entire equation with respect to x. And so the derivative of y, since it's not the variable x, is dy dx. But everything on this side is in terms of x, so you just go about your rules normally. So the derivative of 6e to the x is just 6 times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. Now 6x to the e, I know it's e, but that's just a constant and that's the exponent. So this is what you could use the power rule for. So we have 6e to the x plus, and this would be e times 6. So we'll call that 6e. Yep, I'm bringing 6e back. Here we go. x to the, and you subtract 1 from that exponent. And it's e minus 1. That's all you can call that, right? And now the derivative of this, minus e to the 6, um, there's no variable in this. Don't be fooled by that. It's just a big constant, e to the 6th. And the derivative of any constant is 0. So that part is gone. So that problem just had a couple little tricks in there just to hopefully draw these distinctions. But very easy rule to use. Really, the only new thing we did was right there. Okay, so now number two here, got a little more in it, got a fraction, got a radical, got a trig uh, expression. Going to take a moment and just rewrite this. And we're getting to the point where you might feel like you can do some of these things in your head and just launch right into the derivative. And and we're getting to the point where, I'll, you know, I'm more comfortable letting you do that. But I still say, don't, don't rush and make careless mistakes. So here's our function, and we want to differentiate this. So y prime or dy dx, I'll go with y prime this time, is, this is now ready for the power rule, negative 1 half times 6, negative 3, x to the subtract 1, negative 1 half minus 1 is negative 3 halves. I'll fix that in a minute. But now it comes time to do the derivative of this portion, and notice this is 5e to the x times cosine of x. That is a product rule. And I'm just going to include that negative 5e e to the x with it. So be careful here uh, whether you do your little list off to the side like I do or you do it in your head. That's fine. My first function is negative 5e e to the x. And its derivative, a prime, is negative 5e e to the x. The second function, b, is cosine of x. And its derivative, b prime, is negative sine of x. Remember the derivative of any co function is going to be negative. And so now product rule, product of these plus product of these, right? And so when you multiply these together, you get 
negative 5e to the x cosine of x. And right here, you're going to get plus the product of these, and negative times negative is positive, so we'll get plus 5e to the x times sine of x. And all of that would be just fine, except for that negative exponent. So yeah, if you're uh, comfortable you know, maneuvering that in your head, that's fine. Um, but now I'll move that to the bottom. Make it radical form if you like. The only thing I don't like to see are negative exponents in my final answer, even though some people are even OK with that. OK, there we go. Number two had a little product rule in there just to practice with some trig with e to the x, but no biggie, right? Might be, might be Tupac, but it's no biggie. Oh, boy, they're terrible today, right? So number three, write the equation of the line tangent to this function at x equals 0. OK, classic tangent line problem. Two things to write the equation of a line. You need the point and the slope. I need the y-coordinate of that point of tangency. So I'm going to plug 0 into this, right? That's where you get a y-value from. So g of 0, 0 plus 2, which is 2, over 3e e to the 0. And of course, 3e e to the 0, e to the 0 is just 1. So you have 2 thirds. So your point is 0, 2 thirds. That's your point of tangency. And now to get the slope, that's what the derivative is all about, right? To do the derivative of this, you could do the quotient rule if you like. Um, and that's probably what I'll do. You could also break this up into two separate functions. But then you're going to get you're still going to have to use a quotient rule because you won't be able to divide x squared by e to the x and, and make it one unified term to do the power rule on. So I'm going to do the quotient rule here. And so that means uh, my a is x squared plus 2, the numerator. My a prime is 2x. My b, the denominator, derivative of 3 uh, is 3e e to the x, sorry. And b prime, its derivative is still 3e e to the x. So our g prime of x, our derivative is, remember, denominator squared. So 3e e to the x squared. And then product of these inners, so 2x times 3e e to the x is 6 x e to the x minus product of these outers. And I'll put the monomial first, so that'll be minus 3 e to the x times, oops, pen is dying there. No problem. I'm, I'm a nerd. I always got a pen on deck. 3 e to the x times x squared plus 2. And if you want to distribute that, that's fine. Um, what I'm really going to do anyway, though, is I wanted this derivative to plug 0 in. So I'm just going to plug 0 in to get that slope. And it seems like as good a time as any. When you plug 0 in there, that will just be 0. 6 times 0, boom, 0. Minus 3 e to the 0. Maybe I'll show this just in the sense, uh, you know, in the spirit of showing work. 0 plus 2, that's 2. And the denominator, just be careful. 3 times e to the 0 squared. So just take your time simplifying this. Denominator, e to the 0 is 1. That's 3. 3 squared, that's 9. Uh, 2 e times e to the 0, which is 1, times negative 3. That's negative 6. And so you'll have negative 2 thirds is your slope. And our tangent line is, right? this is the slope. Here's the point. y minus 2 thirds equals negative 2 thirds, the slope times x minus 0, or you could just write x, of course, because minus 0 is, is nothing. And there we go. Certainly, you could graph this on your graphing calculator or Desmos. Graph this line and see that it should be tangent to this graph perfectly at x equals 0. You could use the derivative feature. Uh, I showed you how to do it in an earlier video and try the second trace, um, 6, I believe it is, at 0 and see if you get that for your slope to double check your derivative. But we're going to trust. We're going to trust in this case and just move on. And so now we're hitting another classic, you know, calculus problem. This is how it goes really. You have some classic problems and you learn some new rules every so often for derivatives. 
and then you go back and revisit those same problems but now with your new rules in hand so it's just a new kind of function find any points on this function that have a horizontal tangent line okay a horizontal tangent line remember has a slope of zero so you're basically saying where does the derivative equal zero you know what x value will give you out a value of zero for slope so first we got to get that derivative <clears throat> and yes that is another product rule here so a is 4x a prime is 4 b is e to the x b prime is still e to the x y prime the derivative is product of the inners 4 e to the x plus product of the outers 4x e to the x now that is your derivative and I want to know what x value gives you a value of 0 so we set it equal to 0 and now we're solving this equation so here's where your algebra skills come in folks and to solve this equation uh, we're going to factor this I can take out 4 e to the x when you take out 4 e to the x you will be left with 1 plus x and when I set each factor equal to 0 this clearly gives you x equals negative 1 as a solution and it should be noted that negative 1 is in the domain of this this has no domain restrictions it's all real numbers um, and 4 e to the x when you talk about that equaling 0 you know maybe you're a little rusty with solving uh, exponential equations like this I mean you can divide by 4 and you still are left with this whereas e to the x equals 0 and then you'd be taking the natural log of each side to isolate that x unless you kind of know what's you know what's coming here so the ln of this would be saying x equals ln of 0 and really now you should be saying whoa I can't take the log of a non-positive quantity that does not exist you're saying e to some power gives you 0 there's no no value in the world that does that so this does not yield a solution another way to visualize this is, is if you think about the graph of e to the x it's just that classic exponential growth and you know that it's got a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero it never gets to zero so it never touches but somewhere along the line you got to pick up on that but this, this happens fairly often in these kinds of problems so it's good to see it if you haven't thought about it in a while so we did find the x value but we are not done because it says find the points so we need the y coordinates we need those ordered pairs so negative one comma what so I'm going to plug negative one back into the original so I'm going to do y of negative one and that will be four times negative one times e to the negative one and that will give you negative four over e All right move that to the denominator and so that's your y coordinate so your ordered pair not your ordered apple is ugh, negative one comma negative four over e all right very nice so a simple rule but still using it with all of our other derivative rules and to do these same kinds of things so hopefully you're, you're keeping in practice with these product quotient rules trig rules things like that because that's really what it's all about is is being able to do all of them together when they're all mixed up okay got any questions just let me know. Otherwise, have a good day, kids.